Hang on. The tailgate doesn't even shut. So, I'm going to tell you which direction to go, okay? Okay, go this way just a little. Yep, keep coming. Stop. Stop. Yeah, you're rolling us. Come this way a little bit. Come this way. A little more. There you go. Good job. Well, Unfortunately, I lost on this one, and the guy has been cool enough to take it back, partially probably because he knows he sold me something on either complete lies or complete ignorance. It was really nice to have and use for a minute, but this particular one is not the one for me. Taking it back tomorrow. getting a pretty decent Ranger for a pretty good price. Turns out I was wrong. I think I may have lost on this one. If you saw the last video of me buying a Polaris Ranger 700 XP, this is the follow-up video to that. I've had a lot of good luck flipping things in the past and I'm actually kind of embarrassed because I think I made a pretty bad buy this time. But I want to be open about it and I want to share my experience with others so that you guys don't make the same mistakes and at this point in my life I've realized uh, the best lessons that you remember the most uh, never come cheap. Drove four and a half hours you know that's one of my tips is get away from the big cities to go buy these things you get a lot better deals if you're willing to drive farther than other people are. So part of the problem is uh, when you drive that far to get something it's really hard to come home empty-handed the guy just didn't disclose a lot of things to me he got agitated with me asking a lot of questions before I came down I mean the tailgate didn't open or close right um, the headlights didn't work at first we finally found a short in the switch and fixed that um, one of the tires leaks down air in like a day which he didn't tell me about as I'm loading it I find both rear CV axle boots are completely busted with all the grease out of them. Um, it had really notchy steering. These are bad about that in the first place with the steering racks and I thought maybe I can just get away with greasing things up. Um, it runs good. It starts up good. It runs good. And then the hour meter I noticed had five digits where I'm used to only seeing four and he told me I had 180 point something something hours. Um, on my drive home I confirmed pictures of my old bike and uh, a buddy of mine's razor and both of our hour meters only showed one number past the decimal point where he was saying this one was two but the gauge cluster is kind of messed up so you can't see the decimal point that's the problem um, the button where you could switch between hours and miles wasn't working when I got there um, you know I took a big chance it was it was rough it was rougher than I expected but it started idled great it ran great um, I thought worst case scenario I've got a really rough farm used Ranger but it's only got 180 miles on it and then with more research I finally realized after getting home that it actually has over 1800 hours on it I don't know if the kid was trying to pull one over on me he seems like a nice honest kid but within an hour of getting home pulling it off the trailer um, driving around with my kids and my wife enjoying it a little bit um, I realized that I think I made a big mistake. It was really hard to turn. At some point, one of my kids had hit the four-wheel drive switch and I was letting my son drive it at that point and he couldn't hardly turn. He was about to run into my barn and I got onto him and he's like, it won't turn. Sure enough, I get over there cranking it hard, the front wheel's just in a bind and will not 
will not turn very far at all. So I go back to the garage, I jack it up, I get underneath it, the entire steering rack, um, the boots, the seals, everything's just blown apart, just flopping around in there. There's no grease in the steering rack. Um, it's got a bad tie rod. One of the front CV axles is toast. Didn't know any of that stuff before I left. And then the front end was like really chattering and doing stuff, and it could be that axle in a bind, or it could be the front differential is screwed. I think it was the front differential was locked in and it wouldn't click back out even with the switch off. I texted the guy several times. He finally, he calls me back and he's like, look, I want, I want to make it right. He's really doing the stand-up thing and he said, you can either bring it back to me and I'll give you your money back or he said, I've got a mechanic down here you can bring it to. I'll have him fix everything and I'll pay for it. He's four and a half hours away. So for me to drive all the way down there, drop it off, have his guy fix it, and then me drive back down and pick it up, you know, I'd be I'd be way upside down. Um, it's cost me about 150 bucks in gas each way. I mean, that's 300 bucks I'm out there. If you count the day I take off work, I'm, you know, almost 600 bucks. My buddy AJ is going with me, so the day's not a complete bust. I brought um, my laptop with me. I'm gonna try to get some work done on the way, let him drive. We're taking his Duramax, and I think it's gonna pull much easier, um, keep some miles off my truck, and probably get much better fuel mileage. Diesel's higher, so it'll all probably average out to about the same. Just dropped his son off at school. I got went ahead and got the trailer hitched up to the Duramax, and he's doing something inside. We're ready to go. Hopefully this guy um, stands up to his word. He's doing the right thing, and I'm at least getting my money back. Learn from my mistakes. You know, I was in a big rush. I only had like 20 minutes to look this thing over because he had somewhere he had to be. Don't rush yourself. And you know the biggest lesson I'm learning here is the hour meter thing felt weird to me at the time and I tried researching it but I couldn't get an answer in time and my gut said you know to walk away if, it, if the machine was still rough but had an actual 180 hours on it I'd be okay with it but 1800 hours on this machine is crazy um, the good news is I'm looking at these machines now that I know even this one at over 1800 hours still runs good I mean the motor and transmission are still pretty good so that's that's a good sign to know these things can can last that long no matter how far you drive the biggest lesson here is if your gut tells you that something's not right or if the person was dishonest and it's not what they say it is don't be afraid to walk away and drive back home empty-handed I'd have been better off if I would just walked away I screwed up I hope uh, me sharing this kind of embarrassing video with you guys help somebody else out to not make the same mistake and hopefully this guy holds up his end of the deal and we go down there and I get my money back today that's all I got for this one thanks for watching well the trip went well all except for a little carnage I got my money back but I did lose a tire on the way stay tuned for part three where I actually get an awesome Ranger finally bought